Well, welcome to People's Baptist Church Sunday night service. I sure am glad that you're tuned in with us. And uh, we're going to get right into the service, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you once again for your good grace and mercy. Ask, Lord, that you'll help us once, once more, Lord, as we come before you to sing songs of praise. And, Lord, as we open up the Word of God, that you would just enlighten us, open our eyes to see, uh, that you would um, fill our hearts with thy Word. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. We ask you a blessing. Have your will in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we have a duo that's going to be singing for us, Brother Johnny and Brother Bill, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, and that is just exactly what grace is. It is amazing. Wanted to just a few announcements. Please continue to pray for Tina as she's uh, recuperating from coronavirus, and uh, wanted to uh, also remember Miss Karen her with her hip that she has a problem with, and for uh, a special prayer request, uh, uh, Brother John Nile. Uh, I don't know if any of you even know him. He went to uh, Corinth Baptist with us when we were there, and uh, he's a good man, good man, loves the Lord, but he has been in uh, an ICU for uh, 14 days, I believe. Uh, it, well, 14 days he's been on the ventilator, and uh, uh, his daughter wrote on Facebook that uh, they got bad news. Uh, and she's been up at the hospital since 2 o'clock, and I haven't heard anything else uh, besides that. Uh, but uh, we need to pray for Brother John. He is uh, he was a very sweet man. He was a blessing to me and my family while we were in Mexico. Uh, and uh, the Lord has used him. And we just uh, need to pray that uh, that the Lord would, uh, would, uh, would give him... Uh, that the Lord's will would be done. Uh, that uh, if uh, if it's His will for Him to go into glory, that it would be smooth. And if it's His will to heal Him, that Lord, that He would rise Him up. Um, but for the family, let's remember the family in prayer. And now uh, that's all the announcements I got. Remember that Wednesday night we will, uh, Brother Johnny, will be starting back on uh, the Book of Proverbs. And uh, so be be ready and uh, be a part of that to to uh, to continue our study there. And then Sunday morning, uh, once again, we'll meet in in the auditorium and uh, and have our services. We're at Sunday school at ten o'clock, and 
Then we have our main service at 11. So come out and be a part of that. And I'm looking forward to the Lord to do something great in, uh, in 2021. Amen. Next Sunday when we'll meet will be 2021. Isn't it something? It seems like we just flipped a page yesterday to 2020. And I uh, wish we could have skipped 2020 and went to 21. Amen. That would have probably been the better. But, uh, well, we got uh, our duo is going to be singing for Silent Night, Holy Night. song silent night holy night well i want to invite you to turn in your bibles if you would to john chapter number 15 john chapter 15 as we'll continue our studies and and that wonderful book that we have i want you to please uh, i forgot to make mention of it but remember to pray for the beachams as they're traveling they'll be traveling back and uh, pray that the Lord give them a safe journey. They'll be going also to uh, stopping by a camp that they'll be taking part in. So uh, remember to pray for them as they're, as they're on their way back uh, from Florida. John chapter 15, we started last week, we were talking about uh, suffering and uh, how the Lord has, we're in that, that same last night, we haven't, we haven't moved from it how, how Thursday night they finished in the upper room and they started their journey through Jerusalem. And Jesus is teaching them as they go. Well, these last hours for the disciples are, are so crucial because he is preparing them for what they are 
going to be experiencing. And they are being prepared for uh, his departure. If you'll remember with me, it started in chapter number 13 in the upper room. And, and he reveals several things to them. But he reveals his love most of all. He says he loved them until the end. And in that phrase, it's, it's talking about that he loved them not just until the end of his life, but he loved them with all the love that he had. Uh, it's very interesting to me this right here, that when we say that God loves us or God says that he loves us, he, he's not distinguishing a portion of love. He is distinguishing all of his love that he loves us with. That's a, that, 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 that blows my mind to think about God's love being so deep and so, 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 so vast. And yet he loves me with all of it. Not just a portion of it, all of it. It's tremendous. But as he's preparing these disciples, he is teaching them that, that he's going away and the things that are going to take place, they're going to receive the Spirit of God. He's going to prepare a place for them. He's going to come get them again. He is preparing them for what's going to happen. Then we come to chapter 15 and he is revealing to them the trueness of being their disciple, of being his disciple. How to be fruitful. Then in the latter part of chapter 15, he talks about loving one another. He focuses their focus back to loving each other because in their, in their realm of, uh, of ministering, there's going to be great persecution. And he tells them that, that the love that the church has for each other needs to be great. That's why the Bible says that we're to love each other even the more than we do the outside world. Amen. That, we're to, that we're, to, we're to love one another and have that bond together even greater than uh, physical family. Well, if you read in John chapter, I mean in, in the book, in the Gospels, you'll find out that uh, if we take up the cross of Christ and not forsake husband, wife, brother, sister, mother, father, uh, we're not worthy of it. I, the love that he has given our, our placed us in and the relationship that we have is great. But he says this for a reason because in after he tells us this, he goes in and prepares his disciples for the persecution that's going to take place. And we can read throughout the Word of God, we can read throughout the whole, uh, the whole Bible and see that persecution should not be something that is strange for a believer. I mean, Jesus said if we're to live, if we live godly, in this present world, we will suffer persecution. I mean, that's a, that's a direct understanding that living godly brings persecution. And we're going to be looking at more into that tonight. But we started last week and we, were, we talked about why we're persecuted. And we're going to continue that thought and finish it up tonight of why we're persecuted. But we talked about the reason we were persecuted is because uh, verse number 19 says, If you were of the world, the world would love you. Love, uh, I'm sorry. If you were of the world, the world love would love his own. But because you are not of the world... But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate you. It, we're not of this world. We're, we've been chosen out of this world. We've been, we've been taken out of this world. 
When it talks about the world here, it's not talking about this, uh, this globe that we're on. Amen. It's talking about the system by which it is run by. And when, I talk about, when I'm talking about the system that it's run by, I'm not talking about Congress. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the, the presidential election. I'm talking about that system that is in the, in the background of all the wickedness that takes place on this earth. This is running this world. And we have been brought out of that and made children of the light. Because we are not of this world, the world hates us. He hates us. You could even go as far to say that there's Truth and lie. We as children of the light, we stand on the word of God, which is truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. The word of God is truth. We stand by what's truth. We live by what's truth. We, we produce what's truth in our life. The world System is based on that what is contrary to truth, which is a lie. Satan is, the Bible says, the father of lies. He is the base by which all lies come from. And he is the governor that, that governs the things of this world. You could say that we are those that are most loved by God. Most precious and most hated by the devil. Most wicked. We're not of this world. John seventeen, uh, John fifteen seven. He 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 started off, and we've already talked about it just a little bit. He started off and said, "These things I've commanded you that you love one another." The reason that we need to have that love for each other is because the world is not going to love us. They're not going to love us. It doesn't matter how nice you are. It doesn't matter how kind you are to them. Because of the fact of who we are, they are not going to love us. You'll find those that may tolerate you. But if you live according to the word of God, I can promise you, your life will be that that is offensive because it becomes the conscience by which they're convicted by. That is what the church is in the world. It is the conscience by which tells them that this is wrong, this is wicked, this is evil, this is sin. And the only way to escape it is by repentance and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because we are not of this world, we walk not according to its ways, but we walk contrary. He says in verse number 18, he said, if, you, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. He gives us the understanding that that hatred of the world is that by which will be passed on to all believers, to all believers. Let's read these verses once, one more time. In John chapter 15, verse number 17 through verse 25, it says, these things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate, hateth you. Remember the words, or the word that I said unto you, 
the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they had kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I have not come and spoken unto them, they have not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I have not done among them the works which none other man did, they would not have sinned. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much and ask, Lord, that you'll help me. As we look into these scriptures, I pray that you use me for the honor and glory. We love you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. He tells us, and we've already discussed through that, that we are hated of the world because we are not of it. But we're not of its system because it is evil. The deeds of it are wicked. Listen to what John chapter, 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 11 said. For, for this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who, had, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and therefore slew he him because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Isn't that something? He describes and it is, it, is, it is seen in the very beginning the system by which there is. There is that one that is wicked and that one that is righteous. And he says that he, didn't, he did not just slay him because he was jealous. He slayed him because his works were wicked. And I tell you that the world hates us today because their works are wicked. We've been those that are loved of God, those that are transferred out of the darkness into the light. We become that new creation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. John 15, 9, 19 says this right here. It says, if you were of the world, if you were of the world, it would love you. But because we're not, it hates us. Why? Because we've been chosen out of this world. Well, the world doesn't just hate us because we're not of it. It hates us because of our Lord. You know, I found that in, in, uh, in, in political realms, it's okay to pray. And even to pray in the name of God. But when you make the distinction of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is an offense. It is that name by which our Lord carries that brings the offense, that brings hatred in the life of others. Listen to what he says. In verse number 18 he says, If the world hates you, you know that it hate, hated me before it hated you. He was the first. That righteous, that wonderful, that, that majestic son of God, that one that had never sinned, that one that, that was perfect in all his manners, that one that, that healed, that had compassion, 
that wept, this holy one, the world hated. They will treat us like they treated him. The world couldn't take him. They they couldn't stand him. Paul echoes the understanding of this when he in Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 17, he said, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He carried with him the marks of the beatings that, that, that he endured. Why? Because he was standing in the place for Christ. For he was the one that was standing in and, and giving the same message to those Jews and to those Gentiles as Jesus did to those of the Sadducees and Pharisees. That God had come and that Savior was here. And salvation was present and sin was paid for. Oh, we live through life and we think that we're not going to receive persecution. We live in a country, like I said this morning, that that because of his great influence in Christianity in the beginning, it it held off from from, uh, 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 any kind of persecution. But now that we're seeing that this this change come about, where it's no longer influenced to the degree that it was in the beginning, the church no longer has the stand that it once did. Those things that the church held dear are being brought into question. The character of believers is now being that which is being persecuted amongst those that are wicked. They're treating us like they did our Lord. Should we be those that find this uncommon or find it rare or or find it something that we're to resist? But we should be like the disciples that when they were persecuted, when they were were beaten, they went away rejoicing to suffer for their Lord. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Listen to what what Paul describes the, the character or the look from the world of the believer. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 11 through 14, he describes that, that, that life of the believer in the living and also in the sacrifice and also in the eyes of those that behold him that aren't believers. It says, even to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our own hands, being uh, reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we we entreat, we are made, listen to this, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the off scouring of all things unto this day. He's saying in this right here, he says, we as believers have been called to the of suffering. We are called to that that we don't have a dwelling place. We labor with our own hands in this world. We're 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 uh, we're reviled but we bless. We're we're persecuted but we we take it. He said and to the world We are the filthiness of it. Can I tell you that the world believes and really believes that the problem is the church? The world believes, and if if we can get rid of the that Christian belief and that that narrow mindedness of 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 God's way, then there's going to be peace in this world. But if they hated our Lord, who was perfect, who was precious, who was blameless, who was out sin, 
how much more are they going to persecute and hate us who are not perfect, who sin, who have faults? Oh, my friends, let us not think that that will ever be accepted in this world for we are contrary to it. He said, if the world hates you, you know it that it hated me before it hated you. He says that we're persecuted because who owns us? Who's our Lord? But he also reveals that we are persecuted because they know not God. In, John, in, in the verse number 21 of John 15, listen to what he says. He says, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake because, listen to it, they know not him that sent me. The world does not know God. We, we're, we're living in a society where everybody knows God. Where everybody knows God. It doesn't matter what flavor of religion you are. I know him. But the truth is, if you reject Jesus Christ, you know not God. That is the truth. The Pharisees and scribes thought they knew God. They thought that they knew him well. But because of the fact that they rejected his son, they knew him not. Listen to what it says just a few verses down in verse number 23. It says, He that hateth me hateth my father also. There's no distinction. We can't say that we, we will not accept Jesus Christ. We will not lift him up to praise and honor. And we will not to honor him and love God. That's a fantasy. That's a misconception of mind. Verse number 24 says this right here. If I have not done among them the works which, I, which none other man did, they would have not had sin. Wow. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Jesus said that those that love me have one distinction. One distinction are those that love him. It's found in John chapter 14 and verse number 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. It is that willingness to follow him no matter what. To, to, to keep his commandments to the end. That life of obedience. In Luke chapter 9 and verse number 35, Jesus is getting, it, 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 the, a voice comes from heaven and it says, this, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. If you love me, keep my commandments. If we, the children of God, are, are keeping the commandments, should not be the first thing that we hear him and follow him? If we reject the Son, we reject God. For He came to reveal God to us. Well, this is not a this is not the first time this message was even given to the disciples. This this was this was taught throughout the book of John. We've we've read it over and over again. Listen, as he preached in in, in John 7 28. It says, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. I have not come of myself, but he that, that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him. 
and he had sent me. In chapter number 8, in verse, in verse number 19, again Jesus said unto them, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye know, ye know, ye neither know me nor my father. These are those, those of the Pharisees and scribes, those are the religious groups of the time that, that were to direct and guide the children of Israel. But yet they knew not God. Why? Because they did not receive the Son. He is the pivot by which all things lie. There isn't three different areas. There's one. You're with Christ or you're not. There's no middle ground. There's no other choice. There's no other way. He is that way. And they continued to deny him. And if we deny Christ as Savior, we deny God and know him not. Listen to what 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 21 is it describes the world. It says, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. People said, we don't need to listen to someone tell us what's wrong with us. Can I tell you that it is the foolishness of that manner by which moves the heart of man. It is in Romans chapter number 1 where it describes the world's view of God. Verse number 21, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. If you go down to verse number 28 and verse number 30, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the, those things which are not convenient, being filled with the unrighteous, that all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of evil murders, uh, e uh, full of evil murderers, uh, debaters, deceit, malice, uh, uh, whispering, backbiting, haters of God. Haters of God. Oh, we don't hate God. That's what the world says. We love God. We just don't love Jesus Christ. And yet the word of God says, if you hate me, you hate the Father. There is no distinction of difference. Though man would like us to see or perceive that they have a relationship with God without Christ. What an impossibility. They would not honor Christ and they will not honor God without honoring Christ. Verse number 22 and verse number 25, he reveals something to them. Listen to what he says. It's very interesting. He says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. How can that be? When all men are sinners, when, when all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, if he would not have come, how could they have not sinned? Well, it's not talking about a general sin there. It is talking about one sin. And it's that one sin that separates it. It's that one sin that, that defiles man. And that is the sin of rejection. Rejecting Christ in all that he is. 
all, can I tell you that if we do not accept Christ, we reject God. For God commands us to receive Him as our Savior. Well, there's the last and final point. The reason the world hates us is because of the fulfillment of Scripture. He says in verse number, uh, chapter number 15, verse number 25, it said, But this come to pass, that the words might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Thou, they hated me without a cause. This is a picture, or this is a quote from Psalm 69.4, that they had hated me without a cause are more than the hair of my head. If you'll remember back when, when Peter was preaching in the book of Acts, listen to what he says in verse number 22 of Acts chapter number 2. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the dem uh, demonstration council and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands had crucified and slain. Did you realize that it was by this method that God had chosen? Did you hear what it said? It said that he had been delivered by the determination of counsel and the foreknowledge of God to be slain. God had chosen this path, this path of redemption through the wickedness of the world to provide the salvation for those who will believe. Oh, there's much more that, that we'll look into in these verses. Persecution is a part of Christian life. Throughout the world today, not in days past, today, there are Christians being persecuted. And when our life is over, if Christ does not come, there will be Christians being persecuted that day also. Because persecution and godly living go hand in hand and cannot be denied. Well, we'll see how the disciples respond to all this. As we continually look into the chapters to come of John, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your good grace and mercy once again. Lord, I ask that you would help us as, as we continue to study, Lord, not that we just study to gain knowledge, but that these things would become applicable in our lives and Lord that, that we would be warned even as the disciples are warned that persecution is in front of us <clears throat> and that we should always be faithful to thee Lord I pray that you would have your will I love you and thank you for all that you do in Jesus name Amen now we have the duo that's going to be singing for us. I surrender all. <clears throat>
I surrender all. I hope that's your heart plea tonight as we surrender to the Lord's will in our life. Well, I want to invite you to be here Wednesday night as we'll be looking in the book of Proverbs. And then Sunday morning as we enter into the new year, what a blessing it would be to not miss a day in church next year. Amen. I mean, it makes it really easy now that we're live streaming, but, you know, I'm just being honest with you. I like to see you here in person. It's, uh, we, we, we have a, a small group that comes, and they come faithfully, and I'm grateful for them. But, boy, we have a lot that's not, and I'd like to see you here. So I pray that the Lord will bless you this week and give you a great new year. And until then, may God bless you.